This is Andy Perua for Boxing Social in association with Betfred and I'm delighted to be joined by the outright British champion and still Commonwealth champion Brad Foster over Zoom a matter of what was it, three or four days ago when he defeated James B. Jr. via unanimous decision. Brad, first and foremost, how are you doing? I'm very well, mate. Uh, you know, enjoying life, enjoying a bit of food, you know, after the fight's done. Um, like every fighter is, they're very happy that, that, that they've won the fight. It's obviously it gets back into the fight before we come on to you know how you celebrated it. What was your reflections on your victory over James Beach? Um, you know, it was a it was a good fight. On the night I didn't think um I didn't think I got into it until um round round six, seven really. Um but watching it back I think I won the first the first rounds quite quite easily to be honest. Um you know, he's, he's a tough game, lad, but I think I won them first rounds comfortable. And then uh, in the second part of the fight, I think I started to, um, you know, show more of my skills when I was when I was warmed up. And uh, I think I just won it comfortably. We obviously saw you switch it in quite a lot throughout the fight. How did you find your changing stances? Um, yeah, I found it. Yeah, yeah, I found it good. Obviously, I've been working in um, working, you know, with my pad man, Shay Hightley a lot in switching stances um, and all all that sort of stuff. And uh, I've been watching Roberto Duran. So he, he used to do that. So uh, I thought I'd bring it into the James Beach fight. And uh, it was working a treat, to be honest. Obviously, with Beach himself, was there anything that he did during the fight which did surprise you at all? Was there anything which he maybe did a bit better? I know overall he was victorious, but was there anything which he did do which you never expected of him? Um, his his footwork was a bit better than than I expected. Um, his little feints um, coming in with a like he does this little jump. Um, I thought he'd be heavier on on his front foot, but he weren't. He was quite you know agile on it. Um, so you know, props to him. He he was good in there. Obviously, he obviously did an interview with James uh, yesterday, but he went out today. Uh, James, for him, you know, he, he believes that the fight was possibly closer than what the scorecard suggested, and he made a point of the fact that due to the, the time frame that he had to prepare for the fight, he was certainly concentrating on just dropping the weight, more so than possibly other stuff. Did you feel like, what was your thoughts on first and foremost those comments uh, in response to him? Um, I don't think the fight was close at all, really. I thought I won the, the fight by about um, six rounds. So, wait, yeah. So I thought he won about three rounds of the fight, maybe four rounds of the fight. Um, and regarding the, what did he say about the top, the time limit that I had? Ben, he spent like, um, you know, a lot of time during camp, kind of just making sure he could get down to weight um, to to get ready for the fight, and because of the, the time frame that he had from when the fight was announced until when you actually fought. Yeah, well, he had the same time frame as me, six weeks. I only found out about the fight six weeks, um, but that's not my fault that Beach, you know, blows up in weight after his fights. I was probably around the same weight. Um, so I don't think that's really a, a valid reason to why he weren't his best. Because if that's the case, I had, to, I had to spend most of my training camp losing weight, um, if he's saying that. Um, so I don't agree with that. He had the same time frame as me. Um, obviously, he was furloughed from his job. And in interviews, he said um, that he, uh, he's, he's had the best camp he was training. Uh, two, three times a day. Um, so I, I don't really get where he's coming from with that scenario. Um, and he's saying he had five weeks, six weeks. He had the same time frame as me, so he, you know, he could have prepared just as well as me. How did you find making weight for this fight just because of obviously the different circumstances we're in with lockdown and COVID and what have you? Um, making weight was sound. I was eating, you know, eating fine. I was eating, you know, while he was stuck in an ice cube, I was eating salmon fillet and vegetables um, in the in the hotel. Um, so I, I made weight good night. Obviously, just to touch on that for me, Brad, kind of a fight-week procedure. So from when you arrived up until when you left, just kind of explain to me first and foremost what it was like when you got to the hotel or the venues and what have you to do with the fight-week events. Um, so Tuesday, we had to go down on a Tuesday. Obviously, straight away, we had to have a, a COVID 
19 test, all that no stuff and all that game. Um, and then basically it was just like self-isolating your bubble. And your bubble is basically just like your, your corner team. Um, you have to stay in your hotel room, stay in the hotel. You can't go out, do nothing like that. So, uh, yeah, I didn't really like it. I wouldn't do it again. But, uh, yeah, it's just what you have to do. It's part and parcel with it, isn't it? Well, it was kind of like, um, obviously, as you, as you get towards fight night, you're just starting to lose those last few pounds, edging towards your fight weight. What was that like? Was you able to go and use gym facilities at all? Was there anything in place for you guys? Yeah, yeah, there was a gym facility. If you were struggling struggling to make weight, you can, um, there's a gym there, 24 hours. You can go down whenever you want to, to lose weight. But I, my weight was good. I didn't have to do, do none of that, really. Um, so, yeah. What was it like on the night of the fight, Brad? What kind of procedures were in place from the moment you arrived at the venue? And how exactly did everything work out? Because I think a lot of people were surprised to see you on as early as what you was. Yeah, well, that was it, mate. Um, I, I was told I was, I was, I'd be fighting at 10.45. Um, and so I was just chilling all day. And then 8.45, the taxi was coming to pick me up, which that, that is the time that it picked me up. But I was fighting at 9.45, so when I got to the venue, I had to do all the security checks. I had to take my um, temperature on the way with the, one of them temperature guns. Everyone was in lab suits. It was, it was mad, to be fair. It was like Monsters Inc. or something. <laughs> but, um, yeah, obviously, took, took my uh, temperature and all that, went straight into the venue. And then I was on in half an hour. Now, about 40 minutes I was on. So as soon as I got there, I was on in 40 minutes. And that's a short amount of time to get your to get your hands wrapped and um, warm up. I think I only warmed up for about five ten minutes um, after getting my hands wrapped, and then I was straight in there. But I think that was because of the fights; they they went quicker than expected. Because um, obviously the show went quicker than than expected, but I was picked up at like the same time when I should have been on at ten forty five. But you know, it is what it is. It's all an experience, and uh. I still got in there and the outcome was still the same. That was a Brad Foster win. I mean, obviously, that experience will only stand you in good stead for, for future you know, fights and what have you. But what was going through your mind when you was kind of just getting there, knowing that within half an hour of actually kind of checking in, you've got to get ready to, to go out for your ring walk? Well, that was it, mate. Well, at the time, I didn't know. I thought, you know, I'd, I'd still be fine at the same time. They'd be like talking on the telly or something. Or, I don't know, just show, like, some interviews or something. But then, like, the, the BT man was coming in, say, you're going on in, like, 25 minutes. Um, while I'm, like, just getting my first hand wrapped. So, it's just one of them. It was a bit of a rush, but it do not matter. You know, it's, as you said, it's all a learning experience. You, you, you go through these things, and uh, I've still got that British title, and it's mine for keeps. What was it like, boxing behind closed doors? It's weird. I, I never thought it would be as weird as what it is and as quiet as what it is because it's not even like, you can't even compare it to sparring because it's louder in the gym. There's probably more people um, when, you, when you're sparring in the gym. Um, yeah, so it was weird. You can, it's, it's literally silent. Um, but it's, it's a good experience to go through and um, it was good for, you know, to get, get back boxing again. It's obviously good for the people the viewers to have boxing back on the screen and uh, I'm happy that I was the first one to bring boxing back in a, in a great fight with Beach Junior. That'll obviously be my next question but just on you know, the, the behind closed door shows, was, was you able to hear what your your opponent's corner was saying to him and if so what was kind of going through your mind if you could? Yeah well that's the thing like his corner team would obviously be telling him what to do and then my corner team would be telling me what to do and you can you can hear it all when you're in there so that's kind of like you're counter-reacting each other because you can both hear what the corner is telling you to do. Um, so that made it interesting. That's that's another new experience. Um, but yeah, man, it, it was good. It was good. And obviously, you mentioned there, you know, bringing British boxing back the first headline fight back. What did that mean to you to not only be able to do so, but to have done so with a, a convincing win with, with your points victory? Um. It was, it was, it's always good. I was, I'm blessed to be in this situation, you know. Thank God. Thank you to Frank Warren and his, and his team, you know, Queensbury Promotions. Um, because I, I, fought, I only fought in February, remember, against Lucy and Reed, and then to, 
to be straight in on the first show back. You know, I'm blessed to, blessed to be in this situation. And um, I, I thought really enjoyed it. You know, I'm, I'm back out there winning, back out there in one of the most important fights of my um, career for the uh, Lonsdale Bat Outright. How did you celebrate the victory, Brad? I know obviously we've mentioned you have a, a huge following from, from Leachfield, you know, Brad's Barmy Army, but how did you actually go about able trying to celebrate? Uh, well, I, I came back home straight away after the fight. Um, took, got home about all three and all my family was celebrating at my house. Everyone was smashed, so uh, that was eventful. And then the next day on, on the Saturday, we uh, got together with all my mates, had a little, had a little party and that. And, uh, you know, it was good. Socially distanced, of course, mate. Oh, of course, mate. You know, two metres. <laughs> um, Brad, obviously, I know it's early doors as of yet, but what, what is next? Have you thought about what, you, what you'd like to get into next, who you'd like to face? Um, mate, I, I ain't thought about it, to be honest. I'm just um, enjoying, the, uh, enjoying the win. A nice little rest from boxing. Obviously, that was one of my goals coming into the sport, was to win that British title. Uh, right, and I've done it, so I just need to, you know, maybe sit back and reflect how far I have come, um, and just enjoy enjoy life for a bit, you know, have a little rest because I've worked seriously hard over the years to um, to secure this belt, and uh, you know, it's just it's just a great moment for me, so I'm just gonna, you know, relax, enjoy life for a bit. Obviously, I, I always keep training anyway, but um, you know, just relax and, and chill for a bit. Brad, I hope Tesco have given you some time off. Yeah, they have, mate. <laughs> Brad, <laughs> I'll, I'll leave you now to enjoy the rest of your evening. I know you've got plans. Uh, before I let you go, though, what would you like to say to everyone who not only tunes in to watch our interview, but who also watched your fight last Friday night? Thank you to everyone that's, you know, supported me. There's a lot more to come yet, you know, with Team Foster. Thank you to all my sponsors, Warren Dyson, Emporium Gym, PCA Physical, um, Jim Unity in Litchfield, who, who was letting me use the facilities, Jamie Waterson, um, Nankang Tyres, Harrison Holmes, my sponsor. All my sponsors, are kind of, you know, I ain't got them all in my head at the minute, but, you know, thank you from me. You know, you're a big help to my, to my career and I couldn't do it without you. So thank you to everyone. Thank you to my team. And, uh, yeah, many more nights to come. Hopefully the next one we'll have a big, big barmy army there to uh, cheer me on and... Uh, have a great night. Brad, it's very well put. And respect, and respect to James Beach also. I'm sure he'll, he'll come again. Brad, it's very well put, man. I will leave you to enjoy the rest of your night, as I say. As always, been a pleasure to catch up, man. Before I'll see you soon. Uh, thanks for speaking to Boxing Social. Nice one. Thank you very much. <laughs>